this session, we're going to look into the capabilities of Web Focus Designer working with reporting objects. In general, reporting objects exist to allow. You can create a new one under Content Data Reporting Object. So if you select that one, the basic idea is starting to prepare something that is in between the focus metadata and the report itself. So you could use some logic in here. So if we go to our retail sample folder, we're going to take the WF retail database as a state. And in here, I can add some pre processing code, some join, some define, some filters, and I can add where statements. Filters are fixed filters, which are always going to be active, so they cannot be changed or prompted. Versus where statements being real filters that can be set during runtime. So in here, I can now add a new filter. For that little sample, we're going to go for the in here, and we're going to go for the dimensions, and we're going to go for product, and we're going to go for product category as the first one. And we set that one to be a dynamic filter. So I want to consent, I want to have a, a parameter. I'm going to use category, we're just going to set it dynamic. We allow multiple selection, we're going to make it optional. We keep the rest. In here, I can now insert a new filter after. I can also group a filter and insert a filter after. So adding the filter in here now, I can use something like, let's take the product subcategory in here. And we're going to set that one to be equal. Again, we're going to not take a constant value. We're going to take a parameter. We're going to use dynamic. We're going to optional and multiple. As you see, now I have both as an or. I can, of course, change them to an end, build whatever filter logic I want to build in here. So whatever complexity I really need in here can be defined. I can group it, build very complex filter statements in here. We're going to stick with that one as it is now. And we're going to save that combination in here. So let's save it. And we're going to put it in here. So it's going to buy my retail data object. So save that one. So close it for now. Here's my retail data object. Let me publish it. So now to be able to use it, we're going to create a new visualization from within the data in here. So I'm going to pick up the visualization. And in Designer, first step usually is select my data. So I can select my data. I can select a master file. Or I can go to my Patrick folder. I'm going to go to my reporting object folder. So there's quite some content in here. Of course, you could search in here. So there's my retail sample folder. In here, my reporting object. So I'm going to select that one. So I'll take my retail object and create a visualization on top of that object. So again, I see the same master data in here. So we can now build a report. So let's go for the revenue. Let's add on the product level just for transparency. We're going to go to the dimensions. We're going to go in here. So it's sales related. I'm going to go for product, product category, add that one to the horizontal axis, go to the product subcategory, add that one as the color attribute to my chart. So I got my chart. So okay, let's actually save that one. I'm going to put it into the same folder. So go to the personal content folder, go to retail samples, navigate to my reporting objects folder. So that's my designer start one. So from in here and now let's move on. So I've got my designer chart one. So let's now assemble those visualizations. So we're going to build a page. So we're going to use a very simple designer here. And in here, there's my designer chart. So I'm just going to put it in here. I get a warning that the required parameter is not here. So let's move that one around. Actually, let's move that one over here. Let's move it the way we want to. And as you see, there's the filter dialog. 
So I can select that filter and you see my filters. So I can now add those filters to the page. Of course, I can select the filter dialog. So I select the product category. I could select what is in here. I could, of course, add the all uh, the all option for both. So I got all in here. So I have all in here. I could, of course, pre-populate it with something. I can set it to something. So I change it. Let me run it. And here's my element. So as they're not optional for now, I'm going to take camcorders and computers. Works. Remember, we did a or category in here. So in here, now they are changed, which is not the best solution because that doesn't help for the or filter. So let's go back in here. So if I look into the elements, I can now see here those elements have a binding. So in here, if I select that one, we've got my elements in here, of course. So in here, I got all the bindings. It's the binded to that element. So we can go to the product category, scroll down in here. So in here, we see it's linked to that element. Uh, I've got my relational settings in here. So I got all the elements. So in that my sample here, I can of course change that filter to whatever I want to change it. So actually, let's go back to the filter. Set that one to be optional as well. So change that one. So we're going to add a search control to it. So we're going to add a search control to this element. So we have those elements in here. As you see, I've got a binding in here in my chart. So I have my filters in here. I've got my filters in here. So there, that's where I can see that those elements are built into the report. So I've got my product subcategory, which I see is a in here, so it's a sub element of the product category here. That's my ch chaining. So I'm going to unchain that one. So now they work independent from each other, so they're not chained anymore. So let me run it again. So I can now select computers in here. I still see everything because it's computer or any subcategory. So I can now select computer and I can, of course, do a take video editing and I'm going to take home theater updated element and we see we got computers the full category and we get those subcategories because they're defined as an over category so actually keep in mind building that reporting object gets us more flexibility on defining the filter and in designer itself that binding here allows us to break the chain between the element to get relatively complex filter that doesn't just work on the end combination, but also allows us to do a more complex type of auto selection. So if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment, and hey, see you next time.